The anticipation is growing amongst trick-or-treaters as we inch closer to Halloween. It is time for spooky fun and plenty of treats. But for some, it can be overwhelming this time of year. From scary decorations to loud noises, Halloween can be sensory overload for those with autism. I'm joined now by Craig Sharam with Easter Seals Morgue for some tips on how we can all be good neighbors this Halloween. And Craig, I know that Easter Seals has been an advocate for families who have uh, disabilities and you want to be more inclusive. So how can everybody be good neighbors this holiday season? Absolutely, yeah. You know, trick-or-treating is such a fun event for the whole family, but for, for individuals with uh, autism spectrum disorders, it can cause a lot of unnecessary uh, stress and anxiety and become very overwhelming. So we put together this, this great tip uh, guide that you can download on our website to offer a lot of different things for not only families with uh, loved ones on the spectrum, but also for people living in the neighborhood that are handing out candy this season. Oh, I love that. And you also mentioned sometimes costumes can be a, or can be a challenge too, right? They can be a little tight, a little tricky. What tips do you have for families in that regard? Yeah, one of the one of our favorite ones is that they make so many uh, fun, creative pajama sets that actually look like costumes, and um, they're much more comfortable. And so we find that a lot of the kids will prefer to wear one of those instead of an actual costume. They might be a little restrictive or or uncomfortable. Sometimes they have a lot of tags, and they're made out of a material that can be a little itchy. Um, for kids on the spectrum, uh, they can have sensory uh, sensitivities. So the slightest tag uh, or or string or some sort of part of the costume that's maybe a little pinchy. Or, or scratchy can uh, uh, become a, a huge annoyance for them. So we find that the pajamas are great or buy a costume that's about a size or two larger and then uh, layer it with uh, maybe their more comfortable clothing underneath. Yeah, and that works best for us here in Michigan because it's always so cold. So ordering big and right. then, you know, putting on a sweatshirt underneath would be a great idea. Now, what would you encourage Absolutely. parents to do before trick-or-treating to kind of help their kids through the process? Yeah, one of our, uh, the tips we also uh, uh, talk about is to maybe go through the neighborhood so that you can become familiar of the layout of the neighborhood. It's going to look very different at night than it does during the day, so maybe go through it at night. Um, or go to a familiar neighborhood uh, that they, they are familiar with the, the layout a little bit. Um, another thing is to put your name and phone number on a piece of paper and put it into your child's pocket. Um, that way, in case they do get separated, that is on them. And uh, take a picture of your child in their costume before you go out. In case uh, they do get separated, uh, you can have an up-to-date picture of what they're wearing that night. I love that. Now, what should people know uh, who are going to be handing out candy this year on how they can be more inclusive? Yeah, um, not every neighborhood or uh, home is ADA uh, compliant, meaning that you have steps to get up onto the porch or you may have an uneven walkway. Um, and some of those areas might be hard to see. So we encourage uh, bright lighting or uh, make sure that if, if you have a porch that might not be um, easy to get to, you can go and hand out candy in the driveway or at the end of the driveway when they come by on the sidewalk is a great place. Um, and also minimize uh, things like uh, loud noises or bright flashing lights. Perfect. Craig, you have given us so much great information, great tips. So where can people go to review all of this? Yeah, so this, this is just a small sampling of the tips that we have on our, uh, that we've talked about today. You can get these on our site at Easter Seals Mork. It's EasterSealsMORC.org. You can print that off. We also have uh, buttons and stickers that you can put on, or um, downloadable patches you can put on your kids' costumes because some children are nonverbal and they're not going to say trick or treat or tell you what they are. And so you can put that on their costume to let them know that they have autism, that they're nonverbal. Um, and we also have a free activity book that you can download because uh, you can color. And we have this. It's this year's uh, activity book. Um, it's free. It's a coloring book. You can download it because it's our little treat to the community. So much great information, Craig. Thank you so much for joining us once again with Easter Seals Morgue. And 7X News this morning, we'll be right back.